If you haven't heard by now, Zillow's now making cash offers based off of the Zestimate that is on their website. And I actually saw a great video by Jerry Norton, who if you haven't heard, has a channel called Flipping Mastery TV, who made a phenomenal video explaining how we should be fearful of what Zillow is doing as real estate investors. But this is also really interesting even if you're not a real estate investor, and instead maybe you're just a homeowner that might be looking to sell in the near future. So if you're not familiar, Zillow's actually been buying houses for several years now, and they've worked hand in hand with real estate agents in select markets. But now, they're basically announcing that they're just gonna be making cash offers directly to the seller, and basically they're just trying to get more efficient in their home buying or their flipping program. So according to Zillow's website with their new home buying program, they're basically making you a cash offer that you can request through their website in select markets and make it easier for the seller. And they say it's as easy as four simple steps. Step number one, you complete an application. Step number two, you get a market value. Step number three, you schedule an evaluation. And step number four, you review their final offer. So just like Jerry said, Zillow's essentially trying to become the Walmart of home flipping, okay? And if you're a real estate investor, as Jerry said, how are you gonna compete? And if you're a homeowner, you know, does it make sense to go with Zillow or maybe one of their competitors? Or does it make sense to go with a local home buying company? So Zillow's operating on very slim margins. Again, as Jerry said, basically they're trying to become the Walmart of flipping. So their goal isn't to make a ton of money on every house. Instead, their goal is to do volume. And as a matter of fact, if we look at the most recent fourth quarter, they actually lost money. And a lot of their competitors, they're also losing money, which we're gonna talk about here in a little while, which is very interesting, obviously. So let's take a look at the numbers. Basically, they flipped 900 homes and made $304 million in revenue, which at first glance sounds like incredible. It's like, who, who wouldn't wanna make $304 million in revenue? But let's take a second look at it, okay? They also reported they lost $67 million flipping those 900 houses for an average loss of $75,000 a deal. Now this could obviously be some form of tax play. Maybe they're trying to write off expenses. Maybe they're trying to look non-profitable. The way I see it, they're really just a big billion dollar backed data company. But in 2020 overall, they brought in a total revenue of $1.7 billion, but reported a loss of over 300 million. So Zillow obviously has what they call a Zestimate. And whether you're an investor, or whether you're a homeowner, you're probably really familiar with this estimate. And if you're a homeowner, you love this estimate because on the weekend, you go shopping for houses online, you look at this estimate, you know exactly what they're worth, right? I mean, at the end of the day, their algorithm, based on just a bunch of numbers and stuff that us real estate investors have to run manually, just spits out a number for you that, in all honesty, over the last couple of years, is getting closer to the point where it's actually fairly accurate. Simultaneously, their estimate is just based on exactly what it is. It's an algorithm. Algorithm. So if the property needs a lot of work, it needs a lot of repairs or renovations, then the estimate can actually be very, very far from the actual number of what the house is actually worth, which might honestly have something to do with why they lost $67 million in the fourth quarter. Because they're basing their offer off of an algorithm of a number of what I would consider to be the ARV, which stands for the after repaired value. But the majority of the properties that they're buying need a lot of work, which is maybe why they charge so many fees after the fact, after they actually give you their offer, they basically beat you up over price and they price drop you, I don't know, anywhere from probably 30 to $75,000. And this is something I've seen firsthand where I've actually competed against Zillow or Open Door or OfferPad, which we're gonna talk about in just a minute. And basically, at first glance, their offer is always a little bit better. Except for, as a real estate investor, I'm not price dropping after the fact, and they are. So if you're a homeowner, this is something you need to be really concerned about. And if you're an investor, this is your edge. So Zillow's not the only one of its kind, depending on where you live, you've got Open Door, you have OfferPad. I mean, just take Open Door for an example. They're in 12 different states and multiple different markets throughout the country. You also have things like Redfin and other various different home buying programs that exist out there as well. Zillow just happens to have a massive market share and a big online presence that everybody is familiar with. As you scroll through different articles, then you really start 
start to dive into Zillow's home buying program, there's actually a lot of cons. Again, one being what we talked about a little while ago, which people have literally said right here that the actual final offers regularly came in tens of thousands of dollars below their initial offer. A lot of people were also stating that inspectors were neither thorough nor reliable, that the reasoning for deductions and reductions in price were unsubstantiated in most cases, and basically that a lot of the final offers that were made were based on comparative listing prices, not sold prices. People are also saying the Zillow representatives were not helpful at all, and the Zillow provides nowhere to leave a review on their site, which is a possible indication of customer dissatisfaction. But they do have a ton of market share and a massive online presence. So if you're a homeowner, then what should you really do to make sure that you don't end up in a situation to get taken advantage of? And if you're a real estate investor, how do you compete with the big dogs? So if you're a homeowner, one of the biggest things that I would recommend that you do is that you go to multiple different iBuying companies to compare and contrast the differences and make sure that you only sign on the dotted line when you understand the offer thoroughly and make sure that you've read every single thing entirely. Also, what I would recommend if you're a homeowner is I would go to the different iBuying companies, figure out what one is able to make an offer on your house based on the area that they operate in. And I would also go to some different local cash buyers and see if they can outpay the iBuyers. And again, I would make sure that with the iBuyers, you're not comparing their initial offer, but you're comparing their offer after they reduce the price based on their findings. And compare that bottom offer to some local real estate investors near you. A lot of times, a lot of the local real estate investors, such as myself, are able to do it a little bit cheaper. They're employing local contractors and supporting local businesses. And not only that, a lot of the times you can just simply net more money with a local home buying company, right? Because you don't have all the realtor fees, you don't have the price reductions and things of that nature. But I do understand how in certain situations, selling to Zillow or Open Door or OfferPad or whatever the case is, might make just a little bit of sense due to the fact that it's very simple, it's very quick, and they've got a massive amount of funding behind them. So they're trying to obviously become the Walmart of flipping real estate, but the reality of it is most sellers own their house for about seven years in the United States, okay? So this isn't something that most sellers want to be quick and easy. You know, a lot of times a seller wants to be hands-on, they wanna understand everything thoroughly, they wanna meet the different people, shake people's hands. I mean, and I understand that we're moving towards, you know, the digital age. Don't get me wrong, and I do think the real estate industry in particular is a bit of a dinosaur industry. I mean, you see real estate agents still that are handing out their business cards and driving, you know, an old car with a magnetic sticker on the side of it, okay? So I get it. But at the end of the day, I do think that, uh, you know, the way that the Zillows, the Open Doors, and the Offer Pads are going about it isn't necessarily going to be sustainable for the long term. And I think they're gonna have to make a lot of adjustments over the years in order to actually stay in business because at the end of the day, what company can just go year after year and not be profitable, okay? I mean, I guess uh, like companies like Uber and Lyft can go year after year without being profitable. So uh, maybe Zillow and Open Door and Offer Pad can do it also. I mean, it is other people's money at the end of the day, I guess. So if you're a real estate investor, you're a wholesaler, you're a flipper, whatever you are, and you're going and you're trying to compete with the Zillows, the Open Doors, and the Offer Pads, you know, you wanna focus on what you're good at, right? It's almost kinda like Bitcoin, okay? Bitcoin is really a one-trick pony, right? Bitcoin is really good at like, one thing. Bitcoin doesn't try to be good at multiple things. That's why you have altcoins, okay? And the altcoins, in other words, the alternative coins to Bitcoin, they they basically attempt to be a multiple trick pony. But Bitcoin is the Bitcoin, right? And it is a one trick pony. So if you're a real estate investor and you're a local real estate investor, Focus on what you're good at and stop trying to focus on what you're not good at, okay? You know, if you're really good at going in and building rapport with the seller and explaining to them how you're a local home buying company that supports 
you know, local causes in your area and local contractors and local handymen and all of these different things and you don't charge a real estate fee, uh, you're not a realtor, or maybe you are a realtor, but in that particular case scenario, uh, you're not charging a commission, you know, whatever it is, whatever your value add is to the seller, you know, make sure you lead with that, right? And never look at your competition so much that you stop and you basically stop focusing on yourself. We've all seen that photo of Michael Phelps in the water swimming and beating his competition by a fraction of a second and Michael Phelps is focused on the straight line in front of him and his competitor is focused on him, okay? So you wanna make sure that you focus on what matters. Overall, I think it's actually really cool to see different real estate companies evolving, to see companies growing, and to see the real estate industry change and evolve over time. It is an industry that I think definitely needs a little more technology in the industry, and it needs more people that are thinking outside of the box and that are scaling and looking at the future. So whether you're an investor or not, whether you're a homeowner, I do think it's very cool. I think that you should definitely do your due diligence, you should do your homework, and you should never sell your house without doing your due diligence and without doing your homework, okay? So to be very clear, you know, make sure that you're always doing that, guys. I really appreciate you for watching the video. If you stayed to the very end, I would really appreciate it if you would do me a huge favor and just smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also drop in the comment section below what you think of the new Zillow home buying program. And if you're familiar with the others, like the competitors, like Open Door and OfferPad and things of that nature, I would love to have a conversation with you down in the comment section below. So definitely drop a comment down there. And also, I've got a bunch of links down below you should check out as well, especially if you're a real estate investor, a bunch of different links where I find my data and everything like that. And I've also got a course on how we wholesale and flip over 30 houses a month so definitely go check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.